G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another edition of Just The Tips, round four edition. Uh, the season's getting away from us already. We're nearly a month into the season already, uh, but it's cool. We're starting to see the ladder, I guess, take shape. Um, we're starting to get a good feel for how teams are going, and then still uh, arguably teams with massive question marks on them, which makes tipping fantastic. I had another horrid uh, round of tipping as well, getting just the four correct. Specifically, I got Collingwood over Richmond right. I got Carlton over the Giants right. St Kilda beating Essendon right. Uh, and I got the derby. But the rest of them, I took punts and uh, got them wrong. I, I feel a little bit dirty about the showdown in Geelong. You know, those ones I felt fairly confident about, particularly as well the Hawthorne game. Each and every year I do a footy tipping comp on this channel, I think it's going to get better than the last. And I always think, surely, surely this year I will improve. But I think I'm actually getting worse the longer I do this channel, which maybe says something about tipping or maybe just says something about me. I'm not too sure. But as usual, guys, we will shout out the weekly winners of all of our competitions, the footy tipping competition and the fantasy as well. We do have a game day squad competition going as well. I'm going to do a separate video on that each week and we can talk about how the table is going in that respect. But in this video, we'll talk about how the footy tipping is going, how the fantasy is going. And then of course, I will give you my tips afterward. But don't forget to go check out game day squad. The link is in the description of this video if you want to join in all the fun. It's never too late to join. It's not like fantasy where if you get into round four and you've missed the boat, it's not like that on game day squad. So make sure you get around it because uh, there's heaps of weekly prizes to win as well. So to be specific about how badly the tipping is going, I have slipped to 497th. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how many people got in the league. I'd say probably around that 1100 mark. So I'm probably right in the middle, which isn't too bad. Uh, but I've got 13 correct tips, which is just putrid. The round three winner is Justo97, who tipped eight. And if I'm not mistaken, that means all three weeks in a row, uh, nobody's tipped a correct nine. And I think Justo97 was the only person to get eight um, because it was a hard round of tips. So well done, Justo97. The tipping leader is Pman65. That is a new leader. And I'm not sure if I've ever seen this name leading the competition um, at any point. So well done, Pman65, with 20 correct tips. And the fantasy leader for the second time out of three weeks is someone that I know personally and has been a good friend since well before the channel started. Uh, and it's Henry Sibley who leads the league with an average of 21.35. So well done, Sib. I have no idea if you've ever watched True Footy, but well done, mate, if you are. But as usual, guys, we're going to run through our footy tips through squiggle.com. The reason I do this is because I like to have a visual representation of the ladder as we go. Um, so as you, as you look at the ladder now, we've got two undefeated teams in St. Kilda and Collingwood. And uh, we have one winless team in Geelong. Who would have called that at the start of the year? That is just incredible. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that ladder changing as I do the tips. And we start off with Brisbane Lions hosting Collingwood at the Gabba. And this one is a really, really interesting contest. Obviously, Collingwood, uh, as yet undefeated, playing some pretty good footy. Footy. Not the most polished performance against Richmond, but at the end of the day, they just keep beating the teams that we put in front of them. Uh, but this will be a tough test, make no mistake. Even though Brisbane sit down there in 14th with one win and two losses, two losses away from home this year. Up at the Gabba, I thought against Melbourne, they looked very, very impressive. And I, I actually rate their ability to beat Collingwood here. And I think this will be a tough test contested game. From memory, I feel like Collingwood have gone to the Gabba in recent years and maybe when they were a weaker team, they at least made a really, really good fist of trying to beat the Lions at home. And I think they are the better team here, but I'm going to go the home side here in a bit of an upset, I think you could say, but I think there's still a good team bubbling away under the surface there at the Brisbane Lions, even though they have 79%, which is not great. I think they're going to win a thriller here. So that's my rough call of the week. And, um, or maybe not even this, there might be some more rough calls in this video. Frankly, they're all been rough calls when you consider I've probably got, I think I've got more tips wrong than correct this year, but let, let's not focus on that. I'm going to say the Brisbane Lions win this game by seven points in a thriller. Then we've got North Melbourne versus Carlton, and this I think actually will be an interesting game. Carlton sit third, as you can see, uh, undefeated as well. Sorry, I misspoke before I said there was two undefeated teams. Carlton, of course, have one draw, um, so they're also undefeated against North Melbourne, who uh, obviously had a great start of the year, knocked off the two WA teams and looked good while doing it. And then, of course, went down to Tassie and lost to the lowest ranked side in the competition at the time in Hawthorne as well. We do caveat that with acknowledging that they had a couple of outs. Simkin and LDU missed that game. Mackay has been out for a little while um, and I imagine LDU and Simkin will be available for this game if I'm not mistaken. I hope that's right. I know LDU was a late withdrawal with a, with a calf tightness I think it was um, and he is 
so central to North Melbourne's uh, midfield hopes, I guess, and, and that's no rough call on the rest of North midfield. We're talking about one of the best players in the competition on current form, LDU. So Carlton is a formidable opponent. I think this game is actually winnable for North, and that's more out of respect for how well North have gone lately, presuming they get LDU back. But at the moment, I don't know if I'm confident enough in them to topple Carlton. I do think this has some upset potential. I think North Melbourne are capable of catching Carlton on an off day here at Marvel. But I'm going to go conservative with this one and say Carlton win by 20 points. But I think North will give this a decent shake. Adelaide versus Fremantle at Adelaide Oval is a tough one to pick uh, because obviously Adelaide had a couple of average games to start the year. Maybe that's being a little bit harsh, but certainly against GWS and Richmond, they looked really poor in one half and then fantastic in the other half. Then, of course, in the showdown, they showed off what they're really capable of, running away to win that game by five goals in the end it was. I think they kicked the last six of the game to run away there. And I think looking at the forward line mix, I know it's a very young forward line, but the talent that forward line has makes them a very dangerous uh, proposition. It was interesting. I saw a graphic the other day of a list of all their young forwards that they've got in that forward line. And it was interesting how many top 10 picks were in that forward line. So without getting fixated on that, I think it was just an interesting aside that uh, Adelaide have really invested in the forward half of the ground. Fremantle have just come off, uh, you know, obviously a disappointing opening two weeks where they lost to North Melbourne and St Kilda, two sides that have played some good footy and then overcame a pretty valiant West Coast in the Western Derby, did what they needed to do and uh, overwhelmed the Eagles in the final quarter. I wouldn't say Fremantle are quite looking their most polished uh, final product that we expect Fremantle to be, or at least going off the form of last year. I don't think they've recaptured those highs but it was a step in the right direction and uh, some of their mids and smalls looked really, really good against West Coast. I think Adelaide are going to be tough to beat here and uh, I'm expecting a thriller and I know Fremantle fans probably won't like me for doing this but I think I'm going to tip the Crows here uh, because I am not super convinced about Fremantle just yet. Adelaide, of course, you could have the same doubts about because they've been inconsistent but if Adelaide shows up to this game, I think they have the potential to win this game and therefore I'm going to tip another rough call and say Adelaide win this by 11 points in another good game. Then you've got Richmond and the Western Bulldogs, the premiers from 2016 and 2017, respectively. Uh, not that that means anything, and that was six and seven years ago as well. Uh, but Richmond coming off a uh, tough loss against Collingwood, had a few outs, missing a few key players, and put in a reasonable effort, although I think we can all agree that scoreline could have been a lot worse when you consider how inefficient Collingwood were, particularly in front of goal and converting the inside 50s that they did get. And Richmond, on the other hand, uh, I know they were missing Hopper and a few others as well. Um, they really struggled to get inside 50, but they were coming up against a team that uh, I personally believe is the best in the competition right now. The Western Bulldogs, on the other hand, they had a good win over the Brisbane Lions, a really tough defensive massacre, um, so to speak. They won the game by 14 points in the end, really low scoring, uh, which was a good performance in a, in a must-win game and uh, showed that they, they do have some capacity still this year after a really poor opening two rounds, particularly against St. Kilda, where they got rolled by 51 points. But I think on exposed form this year, Richmond has clearly been the better side. It's not certainly not the case that the Bulldogs don't have the ability to, to beat Richmond and beat them well. But at the moment, Richmond have been a little more stable. They've drawn with Carlton, admittedly lost to Collingwood, and then they beat the Crows in round two. I think Richmond should have enough to get home here, and I will tip them, particularly at the MCG, by 22 points. St Kilda then played Gold Coast. St Kilda sitting, well, second on the ladder now, but first in uh, before I started doing this squiggle against the Gold Coast Suns, uh, who sit there in the bottom four. And St Kilda haven't put a foot wrong this year. They've beaten Fremantle, they've beaten Essendon, and they flogged the Bulldogs by 51 points as well. So they've beaten everyone that's in front of them, similar to, to Collingwood, and their defensive pressure is looking really, really good. And I'm particularly impressed at how well they're doing, considering the big names out, and there's a lot of upside in that forward line, particularly. Gold Coast, on the other hand, disappointing opening couple of performances. They lost to Essendon by five goals. They got annihilated by the Swans, who are admittedly a good team. And then they jumped out of the box and beat Geelong in a game where they, um, you know, were just better for longer. And the midfield in particular was very, very good in the contested stakes. We saw Jack Lukosius get off the leash with five goals. There's some upside there. There's some improvement. There's some progress. A bit of momentum as well. That being said, I think on exposed form, you'd be crazy to tip Gold Coast here. And I know that I know that these two sides have a bit of a knack for playing in thrillers. So potentially we could see a really, really good game on our hands. But at Marvel Stadium here, I think St Kilda's going to have no trouble disposing of the Suns. And I'm going to say it's 34 points. Then we've got the Swans taking on Port Adelaide uh, down in Sydney at the SCG. And, 
you know, after round one, I would have marked this game as a, in my calendar as one of the most anticipated games for me personally, considering the promise that Port Adelaide showed in round one. Uh, but since then, it's been, you know, less than poor, to be honest, with a 71-point loss to Collingwood or something like that. And then a pretty disappointing showdown performance, it has to be said, as well, with Adelaide getting the job done by five goals in that game. So Port Adelaide have been really, really up and down. And again, it's a case of, yes, they have the capacity to win this game. But on the other hand, uh, I equally am a little bit doubtful that they're going to show up to it. And Sydney are a very, very formidable opponent. Obviously, last year's grand finalists, yes, they got done by the Ds by 50 points at the G last week. But again, that is probably one of the tougher fixtures in football right now. Uh, certainly, if you consider Melbourne as highly... Uh, ranked as I do. I don't think this game is an absolute foregone conclusion. Uh, I do think Port Adelaide could win this game. This would be the sort of typical game Port Adelaide win and then uh, equally throws into chaos everything we've said about them over the opening month. They've been up and down. They're a good contested side, which I think will work in their favor at the SCG, which is a very small ground. So I think Port Adelaide have a sniff here. But I think you'd be silly to really back them in too strongly unless you're really just trying to um, be controversial and hope that your, your tips pay off because you're that far behind. And frankly, that I should be doing stuff like that. But even still, I think I'm going to tip Sydney here by a healthy 31 points. Then we've got an interesting clash here between Essendon and GWS. Essendon currently sit 7th on the ladder. Uh, in the middle of the round anyway, and GWS down in 12th. Essendon have won two games. They've beaten two sides that you kind of expect them to beat, or at least at the start of the season, give them a red-hot chance to beat Hawthorne and the Gold Coast Suns in Melbourne, and then lost to St Kilda, who is in red-hot form at the moment. So we're still learning about Essendon, and I don't think we've had any particular standout performance that makes us think, oh, they're a chance for finals yet. But there certainly has been progress under Brad Scott, and they have definitely improved in playing with more spirit, particularly when you consider their forward half um, absentees, uh, particularly the, the big forwards um, that they've had unavailable in the opening three rounds. So GWS, for them, it's kind of been a tale of, of really valiant efforts but again we probably haven't seen a really polished performance from them yet in round one they overcame a big halftime uh, deficit to beat the crows so while they showed a lot of courage to win that game it also they why were they five goals down in the first place they lost to west coast who admittedly um are starting to find some form or at least show some improvement in the way they play and then they gave a really red hot crack against carlton uh, but ultimately fell short so still two teams i'm struggling to get a real read on and that's why i think this game is fairly even at least on exposed form. I don't think there's a clear favorite for this game. I think you'd have to say Essendon. I still think the Giants have some ability, some capacity to win this game for sure. And uh, I think it'll be more even than perhaps the odds suggest. I haven't looked at them. I am going to tip Essendon. I think that's the safe bet. They are at home and they've played some good footy up to this point. But I still think GWS are capable, even though I ranked them in my power rankings at 17th based on exposed form. This game would be a really, really good test for them. So I'm going to go conservative here and tip the Dons in a home game. But I think we'll see a good game I reckon they'll get the job done by 18 points. Ah, and then you've got the grand final preview in West Coast versus Melbourne. Uh, this will be an absolute barnstormer. Uh, the Eagles, uh, as I did in my review video, uh, ultimately did really, really well against Fremantle. We can consider the adversity to win the third quarter in the way they did. Shows this side has come on in leaps and bounds since last year. And there, that by itself gives me some confidence that they're actually going to show up in this game and try valiantly, even if the talent that's going to be available is far less than it was uh, going into the Derby. Obviously, five ca or six casualties, I believe, from that game alone. But they're coming up against Melbourne, who are one of the best sides in the competition. Obviously, won the grand final a couple of years ago, but I think have started this year really, really well. Save for a loss at the Gabba, they've smashed Sydney by 50 points. They smashed the Bulldogs by similar margin in the end and the midfield's firing yes they've got gone out but again they're coming up against the side with probably the weakest ruck situation in the comp right now so i think grundy's going to be absolutely fine i'm anticipating the eagles battle it out for four quarters but the class and the polish of melbourne will be too much to handle and i think melbourne will get out to an early lead and never really look challenged after that so i'm going to say the d's unfortunately get the job done here by a healthy 50 points in this game i think there's too many soldiers missing for west coast for it to be closer then you've got the Easter Monday clash, and this game takes place on the day that I fly out to uh, America. But this will be an interesting clash here, 17th versus 18th. Who would have thought? Remember the days when Hawthorne versus Geelong was a top-of-the-table clash between two absolute juggernauts of the comp? 
Uh, now we're seeing 17th versus 18th, although it is round, uh, round four, of course. So the Cats, again, have been surprisingly poor. The first team to go 0-3 after winning the flag in 47 years. In fact, only four premiership teams have ever done that, um, which is astounding. And I still haven't lost complete faith in them. I think you'd be silly to. But again, I look at their performances and you look at how well Jeremy Cameron's playing and you think, geez, if he wasn't in the form that he's in, things would actually be worse at Geelong. But over the course of my time watching football, I know that it would take a silly man to discount Geelong entirely, uh, particularly this early in the season. I think they are going to find their form eventually. Is it going to be this week? It remains to be seen. Hawthorne are coming off a pretty good win over North Melbourne. After a pretty poor opening couple of rounds, they had a big loss against Essendon. Uh, that was by about 10 goals, I think, and then an even bigger one against Sydney down in Sydney. They rallied to their credit and they beat a side in North Melbourne who admittedly had some soldiers missing, but it was still going to take a good performance for them to win by three goals in the way they did as well. So they can be a little bit up and down and I feel like it Easter Monday clash. So these historically are close games. Hawthorne have an ability to lift and uh, they might have even beaten Geelong in the last Easter Monday clash from memory. So this game will be close. I am going to go with Geelong. I think the experience and the bigger bodies will eventually help them prevail. Hawthorne are not without their chances, but we've seen Hawthorne's best and the Hawthorne's worst already so far this year. And if they're not absolutely switched on for this game, it could get ugly. That being said, they will probably rise to the occasion. I'm still going to tip Geelong. I think it would take a very brave man to tip Hawthorne. But again, don't listen to me. My tipping sucks. I'm going to tip the Cats by 12 points. This will be a good game um, in terms of, I think both teams will lift the occasion and put on a bit of a spectacle. So Geelong by 12. Cool, guys, that is the end of my round four, just the tips. Uh, as we look at the ladder, I have two undefeated teams in St Kilda and Carlton with Collingwood uh, surprisingly lose to the Lions. And obviously, I, I could get that wrong because that's probably a less than 50-50 call, but I've taken a punt on the home side in that game. And amazingly, all the way from 11th to 18th, uh, we have teams on one and three, uh, which means that Fremantle's equal bottom. <laughs> oh, damn, so are we. There you have it, guys. Those are my tips. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Let me know your tips in the comments below. Hope you're still enjoying the content guys uh, obviously been pumping it out lately hope you're finding it interesting and uh, i really do appreciate all the support um it's been a big period for the channel so thanks again remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video cheers